stay on social media, stay stuck. Social media is the enemy of your no-contact regime. As part of a successful no-contact regime, you really ought to quit a presence on social media for around six months. You may, of course, immediately think, why should I? Why should I have to quit social media just because of that low-down, no-good, cotton-picking, pesky narcissist? It's a fair question, but it is one that doesn't merit preventing you from doing this just because you feel defiant about it or that you believe that it is unfair. Of course it's unfair. Everything that arises from the narcissist is unfair, but moaning about it isn't going to get you anywhere. Repeatedly bleating about the fact that it is unfair solves absolutely nothing. I agree with you. It's unfair. Now we've got that sorted and agreed upon, let's get down to doing something practical. Your no-contact regime will need you to make sacrifices. For some, they are minimal. For others, they are more substantial. But that is the price of freedom. If you're unwilling to pay that price, you're being affected by emotional thinking. Because getting away from the narcissist is your number one priority. This stops you being abused. It gives you a fire break to allow you to recover and... It reduces your emotional thinking and allows you to move on, also ensuring that you won't be ensnared by fresh narcissists again. Whilst it will annoy you, stick in your craw and irritate you, piss you off and frustrate you that you may have to effect certain changes because of the presence of the narcissist, that is the hand that you've been dealt and quite simply, you have to deal with it. If you want to lose weight, it will take you time and it will take sacrifice. You have to stop eating the pizza every night. You have to stop chomping on the Doritos and quaffing all of the beer. You have to do so for a number of months until you reach your target weight, and then you can reintroduce those things, because weight management becomes easier than weight loss. It is similar when it comes to the principle of no contact. To begin with, you will have to make sacrifices, staying away from certain places, perhaps cutting out certain people from your life who are associated with the narcissist. You may have to make certain alterations to routine, changing your telephone number, and so forth. An irritation and an inconvenience, no doubt, but well worth doing to ensure that you win. It's no different when it comes to the issue of social media. You ought to quit it. Here's why. Social media is a conduit for you to be hoovered. Many narcissists utilise social media, not all, but most do, as a method of trying to contact you. It will be done either directly by sending you messages, writing on your timeline, or through the creation of false profiles. These are hoovers, and they are being done in either a benign or malign way to assert control over you and draw fuel from you. The narcissist likes to use social media because of its ubiquity and the fact that it's so easy to use. The narcissist can sit in his underpants, in his bolt hole, hitting the keyboard, tapping the phone, sending out those fishing lines to try and hoover you and draw fuel from you, assert control over you and possibly even draw you back into the formal relationship. It's easy for the narcissist to do. Quick, low energy, and often very effective. And therefore, if you remove yourself from social media, you can't be hoovered through it. It is a guillotine moment. Social media also causes a huge problem in terms of temptation. As you know from my work... The imposition of total no contact means staying out of the five arenas of interaction. And one of those arenas, the third one, is not doing things in relation to the narcissist. This covers such things as not washing the narcissist's socks, running around after him getting his medication, not sitting outside his house snooping to see who's there, and 
most of all, not watching what the narcissist is up to on social media. Far too many people fall to the ease of going to social media and trying to see what the narcissist is up to. You do not need to do this. This is a breach of no contact. Driven by emotional thinking and a lack of understanding as to what no contact is, many people think that it is permissible to have a snoop, to have a gander, to have a nosy at what the narcissist is up to, to find out if the narcissist's life has turned to shit, to find out if the narcissist is with somebody else, to find out if there is trouble in paradise in that new relationship. You do not need to know. If you find out, if you go and look, this is what happens. You'll see something which you probably won't like, and therefore you'll get upset, annoyed, irritated, frustrated. This will increase your emotional thinking. You are then likely to enter other arenas of interaction by thinking about what you've seen, talking about it with other people, and it might even drive you to contact the narcissist, either through message, telephone call, or in person, and therefore you have occasioned further breaches of your no-contact regime. You may think, well, I need to know what they're up to. No, you don't. You know that you're dealing with a narcissist. As soon as you know that, you're fixed with that knowledge. You don't need to go and look. So often people say to me, HG, I looked on his social media and I saw a picture of him and this new woman. Why is he posting that? And of course my response is, you're asking me the wrong question. You should be asking yourself, why, when I know I'm dealing with a narcissist, am I continuing to look at his social media? If you don't look, you won't have seen the picture, and therefore you wouldn't have to ask the question and be wondering what it all means and getting worked up about it. You're bringing it on yourself. Of course, it is so easy to go and sneak a look at what the narcissist is up to. And many people think that doesn't really hurt. And many people think that that's not a breach of no contact. But it is. Because not only is the act in itself dangerous in terms of causing an adverse consequence and increasing your emotional thinking, but it is often a gateway to further breaches of no contact, hindering your progress and pulling you back into the dangerous dynamic with the narcissist. If you come off social media, you'll be far less likely to then go and look at the social media of the narcissist and, of course, be far less likely to receive any updates about the narcissist in your own timeline, etc. Therefore, quitting social media avoids getting stuck in that regard. Another reason for getting off social media is that if you are posting, even if it's nothing to do with the narcissist, the narcissist is likely to be snooping. Yes, you may try and set certain profiles to private, but of course, you're still putting information out there, and either the narcissist will be able to see it on social media, or one of the members of their coterie will see it and pass this information on. This will occasion hoover triggers, and could lead to the narcissist hoovering you because of the content of what you're putting out there. Whilst it might be tempting to want the world to see that you're doing well, post-narcissist, that you're recovering and achieving, you don't need to put it out there. You can show that to your friends in person. Tell them on the telephone. Tell them in messages. You mustn't broadcast it to the world, tempting as it is. Doing so is as a consequence of the corruption by elevated emotional thinking of your narcissistic traits of pride and vanity, causing you to want to show the world that all is well in the nation-state of empath. And of course... If this information comes our way, it amounts to a hoover trigger and may well occasion a hoover. Furthermore, putting out certain information about yourself arms the narcissist with intelligence which could be used against you. Don't do it. Finally, another reason to stay off social media is that it is a hunting ground for other narcissists and following post-escape or post-disengagement, or perhaps when you're sat on the shelf, You'll, of course, have recently been involved with the narcissist, meaning your emotional thinking will be high. This means that you are going to be vulnerable to other narcissists coming along. Notwithstanding the information that you have about narcissism, if you don't get your emotional thinking down, then you will either miss the red flags, or if you see them, you won't pay attention to them. Accordingly, coming off social media means you're taking yourself out of a hunting ground, Sure, you can return to social media in five or six months' time after a solid no-contact regime, 
because by that point you'll have reduced your emotional thinking to a point that you will respond with logic, spotting narcissists when they first come along and avoiding them, and also staying away from the clutches far more effectively if any hoovers do get through from the previous narcissist that you had escaped from or who disengaged you. There are very cogent reasons, logical reasons, for getting off social media. If you don't, your recovery will take longer and you're more likely to stay stuck, risking hoovers, risking the temptation of going and looking and seeing what the narcissist is up and therefore unravelling your no-contact regime, giving information and intelligence to the narcissist which could be used against you and running the risk of being caught by new narcissists. Think long and hard about your position on social media. If need be, consult with me and I'll give you the answers and the logic to get you over the hump that you might be experiencing in taking yourself away from it. As I've mentioned, it doesn't need to be forever and you'll probably find that your life is actually far more enjoyable staying off social media as much. If you must remain, for example, for business reasons, then you must stick to the business side of your social media presence and not the personal side. Don't post anything about you your personal circumstances, keep it purely business, but remain vigilant for potential hoovers that will come through the business side of matters. If you must remain, then block, block, unfollow, unfriend, and ignore profiles that you don't recognise. It's highly likely that these are either the narcissist you've just escaped from or been disengaged from, hoovering you at the appropriate time, or fresh narcissists who don't recognise a boundary and decide that they want to connect with you by saying hey sugar tits great smile there they don't know who you are why on earth are they contacting you avoid posting about any personal matters if you must remain on social media keep it to a conduit whereby you can read about other people and information about other factors and avoid putting your personal information out there to reduce the risk of the narcissist picking up on this having a hoover trigger occasioned by that information and thus raising the risk of being hoovered. Ultimately, however, you ought to look at removing yourself from social media for a period of time of roughly five or six months to consolidate your no-contact regime, to reduce your emotional thinking, and to avoid the risk of staying stuck. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>